Hi, I'm Dr. Kea Patel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the optic section with your slit lamp to look at the cornea. The slit lamp is so called because it can be set up to create a narrow slit beam to provide detailed cross-sectional images of the semi-transparent ocular structures. LED illumination is ideal because it maximizes the scattering of light by these structures and hence increases visualization of the layers and potential abnormalities. An optic section of the cornea is an effective way to examine corneal layers and determine the depth of any corneal abnormalities. Direct viewing of the cornea with an optic section often follows an initial general overview with diffuse illumination. So it is important to remember to remove the diffuser before you begin. Reduce the slit width to a minimum, but increase the brightness to compensate. Start with a medium magnification of around 16 times, as this can help when judging the accuracy of the focus. The starting angle of the illumination in relation to the observation system is not critical, but is usually set to around 30 degrees. It will constantly vary as you scan across the cornea to ensure the focus remains optimised. With the slit positioned approximately in the centre of the cornea, move the slit lamp in and out using the joystick to optimise the focus until you see the thin, bright line of the corneal epithelium with the grainy texture of the stroma behind. When perfectly focused, you can see the main layers of the cornea. With the illumination system on the left, as it is here, the bright layer closest to the illumination system is the epithelium. The majority of the cornea is the stroma, which has the grainy appearance, and the relatively bright layer on the back of the cornea is the endothelium. Note that Bowman's and Desimé's membranes are not visible. When the illumination and observation systems are positioned such that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, the bright reflection of the light source off the tear film is seen on the front of the optic section. To be clinically useful, the level of clarity seen here needs to be maintained as the slit lamp is manoeuvred to examine all parts of the cornea. Notice that because the curvature of the cornea, when the central portion of the optic section is sharply in focus, the upper and lower parts are slightly out of focus. Once you have scanned the central cornea, you'll need to additionally scan the inferior and superior portions to be certain you have not missed any important clinical findings. The cross-sectional view of the corneal layers can be stretched or compressed by altering the angle between the illumination and observation systems. As you increase the angle, the section widens, with greater separation between the epithelium and endothelium layers. This is useful when trying to determine the depth of a particular abnormality. To examine the cornea, it's useful to develop a standardised scan pattern ensuring that the complete structure is examined every time. Because the cornea is curved, keeping the optic section sharply in focus while moving the slit across the cornea requires the joystick to be moved in a slight arc. This comes with practice and constant monitoring of the quality of the optic section to provide feedback for fine adjustments of the joystick. A commonly used scan pattern involves scanning the temporal limbus to the centre then continuing from the centre to the nasal limbus, switching the direction of the illumination as you cross the midline. The angle of the illumination is reduced slightly towards the centre and increased as you move towards the periphery. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Kea Patel. And if you'd like this video, come back to watch more. Or you can learn more at Topcon Healthcare University.